Hi there, welcome to the channel. My name is Brick and I'm your official Puerto Rico travel guide. From the common to the uncommon, I help people discover Puerto Rico's most amazing, natural, historic, and cultural attractions. And today I'll give you a complete guide of what is known as the indigenous capital of Puerto Rico, the municipality of Hayuya. Hayuya is a historically rich and significant municipality located deep in the mountainous region of central Puerto Rico. It is known for its pristine natural beauty, impressive historical landmarks, and its rich cultural traditions and history which are heavily influenced by the indigenous people of Puerto Rico called the Tainos. If you're traveling to Hayuya from San Juan, there are two main ways to get there, the northern and the southern route. The northern route, also referred to as the panoramic route, will take you through winding roads full of vegetation and beautiful scenery throughout the municipality of Ciales. Although this route is the quickest way of getting to Hayuya, taking approximately two hours from San Juan, its winding roads might make some people car sick. For this reason, I recommend that most people take the southern route to Hayuya. This route takes approximately 20 more minutes and takes you through Route 52, a highway that crosses the center of the island through Caguas, Salinas, and eventually Ponce. There, you should take Route 10, which leads you back north into the mountains and eventually to a relatively short and mildly winding road to Hayuya. Our first stop when arriving in Hayuya was the Hacienda San Pedro. The Hacienda San Pedro is a historic coffee plantation established in the early 1900s that produces artisan coffee using traditional methods passed down from generation to generation. At the Hacienda San Pedro, visitors will not only be able to taste their exquisite coffee completely elaborated at the Hacienda, but also buy their coffee beans in bulk, as well as other coffee-related souvenirs, such as coffee mugs and tote bags. After this, you should walk up to the second floor of the coffee shop to visit their small museum, which holds antiquities and tools that were used to elaborate and produce coffee in the early 1900s. This museum provides insight into the history of the coffee industry in Puerto Rico and the life of the farmers who lived and worked on the plantation. Then you might want to head outside for some fresh air while you sip on your coffee on one of the seats near their charming artificial lake surrounded by luscious vegetation and full of friendly fishes and turtles. After this, you might want to take a short stroll around their coffee fields and facilities that are open to the public to see their coffee making process and learn about the tools and techniques used in coffee production. After this, we made our way to the Museo del Semi, a museum surrounded by some of the highest mountain peaks in Hayuya that is dedicated to the preservation and celebration of the Taino culture, the indigenous people of Puerto Rico. The Museo del Semi is unique from all the other museums in Puerto Rico because it is shaped to symbolize the Semi, a sacred object carved out of rocks that represents various deities and spirits of the Taino religion. For a small fee of $1 per adult and 50 cents for kids, you'll be able to go inside of the Museo del Semi, where they house a collection of artifacts, weapons, tools, pottery, and other objects used and made by the Taino people including pristine examples of the semi. Not only this, but at the Museo del Semi, you'll be able to see photographs, 
art pieces, and other architectural details that represent Taino petroglyphs and other aspects of their culture. After learning about the Tainos and their cultural heritage, we headed outside of the Museo de Semi and walked to the Museo Casa Canales. The Museo Casa Canales is a museum and a replica of the home that belonged to Rosario Canales, the first major and one of the founders of Hayuya. Inside this beautiful house museum, you will not only learn about Rosario Canales, but also about his influential family that played an integral part in Puerto Rico's nationalist uprising of 1950. You see, during the years prior to 1950, a nationalist movement gained momentum led by a man called Pedro Albizu Campos. This nationalist movement condemned the colonial status of Puerto Rico and the welfare state relationship that I was developing with the United States. This sentiment was only amplified by the Ley de Mordaza, a law that condemned and criminalized any action or sign of patriotism to Puerto Rico, including possessing the Puerto Rican flag, singing patriotic songs, writing about independence, and gathering with other people to advocate for the independence of Puerto Rico. Well, in the basement of this very house, this nationalist movement led by Rosario Canales' daughter called Blanca Canales held several meetings to discuss and plan for what would be the nationalist revolt on October 30 of 1950. Although this uprising occurred in various municipalities around Puerto Rico, Hayuya was a municipality where efforts were the most successful, to the point where the nationalists took control of the municipality. After several violent encounters with the law enforcement and against all odds, Blanca Canales valiantly climbed atop a building in the city center of Hayuya, raised the Puerto Rican flag, and proclaimed the Republic of Puerto Rico. Though this uprising was short-lived, the actions taken by Blanca Canales and other brave Puerto Ricans that defended their national identity were heard around the world and have had a significant impact on our history and patriotic rhetoric years after these events occurred. Inside of the Museo Casa Canales, you will have the chance to see all kinds of memorabilia and items used during the revolution, including photos of Blanca Canales, a purse used as evidence to incriminate her after the revolt, and bills intended to be the official currency of the Republic of Puerto Rico. In the other rooms inside this house museum, you will see personal belongings of the Canales family, including the typewriter used by Nemesio Canales, who was a writer and co-founded the newspaper El Día, which today is called El Nuevo Día and is the largest newspaper in Puerto Rico. In the other rooms, you'll travel back in time and see other items and furniture used during the early 1900s in Puerto Rico. The Museo Casa Canales is open every day of the week from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and from 1 p.m. till 3.30 p.m. and has an entrance fee of $1. Also, if you're looking to visit the Museo Casa Canales during your trip to Hayuya, but don't know where to stay, or you have a limited budget for accommodations, you could consider camping on the grounds where the Museo del Semi and the Museo Casa Canales are located. To do this, you have to contact the administration office during their operating hours and reserve your space with a camping request. For those interested, I'll leave their contact information in the description below. After visiting the Museo del Semi, and the Museo Casa Canales, it's time to take a short drive and make an obligatory stop at one of Hayuya's and Puerto Rico's most iconic and beautiful archaeological sites, La Piedra Escrita. La Piedra Escrita 
which translates to the written stone, is an impressively large boulder located in the middle of a river that is unique because it is covered with numerous Taino petroglyphs. To visit La Piedra Escrita, you simply park your car in this spacious parking area and walk down the wooden boardwalk that leads you to the riverbed. From there, you can jump straight into the freezing water of the Saliente River and admire La Piedra Escrita, which seemingly blocks the flow of the river with its humongous presence. Or you can make your way to the top of the rock to get a closer look at the gorgeous Taino petroglyphs that symbolize aspects of their indigenous culture. The significance of these petroglyphs in telling the story and life of the Tainos and their culture led La Piedra Escrita to be recognized and added to the U.S. National Registry of Historic Places in 2003. And not only do you get to come face to face with history at La Piedra Escrita, but you also get a chance to have a lot of fun by carefully sliding or jumping into the natural pond created in front of La Piedra Escrita. After spending some time swimming around in La Piedra Escrita, it is now time to get yourself a hefty dinner before continuing your adventure by visiting Agusao Restobar. This restaurant is artfully painted and decorated with traditional items and symbols of the Puerto Rican culture, such as the beautiful flamboyant. Agusao has spacious indoor and outdoor seating areas where you'll be able to admire the peaceful mountainous landscape of Hayuya and the Saliente River, which runs directly behind the restaurant. Now, when it comes to food, we decided to try two traditional dishes from their appetizer menu. The first was papas rellenas, which are mashed and fried potatoes filled with meat. The second dish was barriguitas de vieja, which are mashed pumpkin fritters that are soft on the inside, crunchy on the outside, and taste deliciously sweet all around. As for the main dishes, we went with cube steak with a side of mashed root crops, and also asopao de camarones, a delicious traditional Puerto Rican stew that is made with sofrito, adobo seasoning, rice, and it's perfect for the cold weather of Hayuya. We paired these flavorful dishes with one of Puerto Rico's most iconic drinks, la piña colada, a frozen drink or cocktail made with pineapple juice and cream of coconut. After this delicious meal, we headed over to the central plaza of Hayuya for the main reason we were in the municipality, to see the Festival Nacional Indígena. The Festival Nacional Indígena is a yearly week-long festival held in Hayuya during the month of October that commemorates and celebrates our Aboriginal Taino heritage. The festival features a variety of cultural activities including contemporary and Taino music, dances, and performances. At the Festival Nacional Indígena, You'll also be able to shop for souvenirs at their artisan fair where you'll find all kinds of items such as traditional candy, musical instruments, jewelry, and art pieces deeply influenced by our Taino heritage and Puerto Rican culture. While you're there, you don't want to miss the opportunity to explore the Plaza Pública de Hayuya and all of its monuments and historical buildings. During our time here, we first visited La Escalinata de Hayuya, a colorful stairway decorated with gorgeous mosaics and inscribed with the names of Puerto Rican municipalities that were derived from the Taino language, including the names of the Taino tribe chiefs called caciques. At the very top of this staircase, you'll find a bust honoring one of the most important Taino chiefs the Cacique Ayuya, which the municipality of Ayuya derives its name from. Behind this monument, you will also find the Tumba del Indio, a tomb with the remains of a Taino 
resting in fetal position accompanied by some personal belongings to aid in the afterlife. After paying respects to the Taino in the Tumba del Indio, you'll want to continue your way up the rest of the stairs and visit the Centro Cultural de Jayuya. Inside the Centro Cultural de Jayuya, you'll find an impressive collection of all kinds of objects representing and pertaining to the Tainos, including fragments of ceramics, tools, jewelry, weapons, petroglyphs, religious objects such as the semi, and other objects pertaining to the pre-Tainos, which was the civilization that predated the Tainos in the island of Puerto Rico, which the Tainos called Boriquen. Here, you will also see photographs of the past Festivales Nacionales Indígenas and paintings illustrating the enslavement and furious rebellion by the Tainos to fight against the Spanish colonizers. Now, after visiting these impressive cultural attractions, we went back down to Hayuya Central Plaza to witness what is probably the most anticipated event of the whole festival, the Reinado Indígena. For the Reinado Indígena, students from all around Hayuya and nearby municipalities are tasked with creating extravagant handmade attire inspired by our Taino roots, which are artfully made almost entirely with natural materials. In this event, participants parade their intricate and majestic creations on the main stage to be evaluated based on their ensemble, presentation, and performance for a chance to be crowned the queen of the festival. I have to say that we were ecstatic and proud to see a multitude of people excited to see the coronation, visit the numerous attractions in Hayuya, and preserve our ancestral indigenous heritage in this prominent and influential festival after a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic. Now, I know we covered a lot so far, but this travel guide is not done just yet. During our first visit to Hayuya, we missed many important landmarks and attractions, so we decided to go back a few months later to include those in this ultimate travel guide to Hayuya. But before continuing our adventure in Hayuya, please take a moment to smash that like button if you're enjoying this video and found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos that'll help you explore the common and uncommon parts of Puerto Rico. And follow me on Instagram at Briggs Travel Guides for some behind the scenes of my Puerto Rico travel guides. Finally, if you'd like to support my work, you can make a small one-time or monthly donation on buy me a coffee by clicking the link in the description below. These donations as small as $5 allow me to continue making free content to help people explore Puerto Rico. Now, going back to your adventure in the mountainous municipality of Hayuya. On our second trip to Hayuya, we decided to stay a weekend in Hacienda Victoria Lucia. This local and family-owned inn used to be the grandiose estate of Hayuya's most important doctor back in the day. To me, what makes this inn unique is not only the large stones completely covering the exterior of the facilities, but also its breathtaking garden that wraps around the whole property and where you can peacefully spend some time in its different nooks and areas, reading a book, meditating, or simply admiring the beautiful mountains of Hayuya. Hacienda Victoria Lucia also has other amenities like a refreshing pool to jump into on a hot summer day and a full-sized restaurant called Doña Benita that is the perfect place to have a dinner date. 
Most rooms are located on the second floor of the building, which you can access by going up the main staircase. These rooms are effortlessly decorated to give a sense of peacefulness. And if you're lucky like us, you might receive a small welcome gift and letter from the friendly staff. Also, when making a reservation, be sure to inquire about the availability of the rooms that feature charming balconies with views of the perfectly landscaped garden and the mountains of Hayuya. Despite its relatively small size, Hacienda Victoria Lucia isn't merely a place for sleeping. It is a place to experience where you can spend hours walking around searching for unique details hidden all around, such as the beautiful fountains, decorations depicting Taino petroglyphs, and its intricate chandelier hanging from the main driveway. We can truly say that we enjoyed our time staying in Hacienda Victoria Lucia, so if you want a similar experience while visiting Hayuya, check out the description below where I've placed their contact information and other alternatives for accommodations in Hayuya. Now, the first stop on our first day in Hayuya was the coffee shop called Café Nativo. To get to Café Nativo from the main street, you'll need to drive up a steep road that leads you to a spacious parking area. From there, you might need to hop onto one of their off-road carts that take you all the way up to their picturesque cafe nestled on the hillside of their farm. Here, you'll be seated on their wooden deck overlooking the luscious landscape surrounding the cafe and get a chance to taste their 100% locally sourced coffee from Hayuya, which pairs perfectly with their delicious brunch options. If you're a coffee lover, be sure to check out their small gift shop where you can purchase coffee-themed t-shirts and bags of their locally grown coffee to take home. Then, after finishing your breakfast and before heading back to your car, you might want to walk down the road to explore their cozy seating area where you can connect to nature and enjoy the sounds of the forest. After leaving Café Nativo, we headed towards the central plaza to visit the Tourism Information Center to Centro Hayuya. Even though I had visited Hayuya in the past and done my research, we wanted to pass to Centro Hayuya to get a local's perspective of what were the best places to see and visit during our trip to Hayuya. At to Centro Hayuya, the friendly staff can also give you up-to-date information and even help you coordinate guided tours of the attractions in the municipality. At this information center, as well as right across the street, you'll be able to take photos with colorful paintings and murals depicting the iconic Hayuya flag, some of its most popular touristic attractions, its beautiful landscape, and the symbols used by the Tainos in their petroglyphs and culture. After taking many vacation photos, we decided to take a short walk to see Hayuya's Central Plaza during the daytime. And we're glad we did because without the large crowd of the Festival Nacional Indígena, you can really appreciate the details in this beautiful public plaza, including its stunning church, the statue of Nemesio Canales, and the ever-present Taino symbols, in this case, the Sol de Hayuya, or the Son of Hayuya. We also took this time to revisit the Escalinatas de Hayuya to see its colorful mosaics brightly shimmering during the daytime. While you're here, I highly suggest you take a short walk to see the Puente de Mosaico, a stunning bridge that connects the central plaza of Hayuya to the neighborhoods on the opposite side of the impressive Rio Grande de Hayuya. As you can see, this bridge is decorated with a colorful mosaic that spans the whole length and depicts the different natural landscapes, rivers, and flora of Puerto Rico. If you like this view, you might also want to take a short walk to visit the Puente de Hierro, an iron bridge located a short walk from the Puente de Mosaico. From here, you'll also have a breathtaking view of the city center, 
de Rio Grande de Jayuya and the stunning Puente de Mosaico. As you can imagine, because of Jayuya's high altitude and location in the central mountain range of Puerto Rico, it receives a significant amount of rain. So when it began pouring during our stroll around the central plaza, we decided to do some indoor activities by visiting Tubolera Jayuya. Tubolera Jayuya is located a short drive from the central plaza and features modern facilities, 10 bowling lanes, and a dining area that sells delicious Puerto Rican dishes and appetizers. When we arrived, we were surprised to be the first clients of the day, but we were told that during the weekends and at night, this bowling alley does get packed with families and the local bowling league. Tubolera Jayuya is a great place to spend some quality time and get competitive with your friends and family. That is, if you're any good at bowling, unlike me. Before going to the next activity of the day, we decided to satisfy our hunger at the Restaurante La Casona. This restaurant is located right next to the main road and features a spacious indoor and outdoor seating area. At the Restaurante La Casona, they have a varied menu that includes many local dishes, such as mofongo full of octopus and the delicious asopao de pollo. The same traditional Puerto Rican stew with rice we ate in Agusao on our first trip, but this time made with chicken. After eating that delicious meal, we were ready to have a unique tour of La Destilleria Craft Spirits. La Destilleria is an award-winning distillery recognized as the first craft distillery on the island. We began our tour in the barrel room where Cesar, a friendly and knowledgeable team member of La Destilleria, gave us a brief history of the company's origin back in 2012. Here, Cesar also explained the types of barrels and lengthy process that they use to age the rum to achieve the perfect flavor, aroma, and color. After this, we passed to their main production area where we saw all types of equipment used to test and experiment with the spirits they produce and where the large distilling stills are located. Here, Cesar was kind enough to give us an in-depth explanation of their distilling process and how every part of the rum making equipment plays an important role in creating the perfect end product. And talking about end product, after the tour of their production facility, we had the chance to actually try their rums and spirits in their tasting room. Here, we were able to taste their complete and varied portfolio of award-winning high-quality spirits, including their artesano white and aged rum, their boique spiced rum, and their 106 strong rum, which is used to make old fashions and other cocktails in many famous bars around Puerto Rico, such as the world famous La Factoria in Old San Juan. During this tasting, Cesar gave us some important tips and tricks on how to distinguish the differences between each type of rum and encouraged us to analyze the process and ingredients that went into making these craft spirits. The last product we tasted was their Pito Rico Pitorro, a Puerto Rican version of moonshine that they produce as their base 106 white Pitorro and also in various flavors made with natural fruits from Puerto Rico, including coconut, passion fruit, and tamarind. After finishing this tasting, I have to say I'm not surprised that La Estileria's varied portfolio of high quality craft spirits have won a combined 14 prestigious medals at the ADI International Spirits Competition and the Ascot Awards. If you want to book this unique tour or rum tasting experience by La Estileria in Jayuya, make sure to check out the description below where I've placed a direct link to their website. After our fascinating tour of La Estileria, we headed back towards the city center of Jayuya to visit a place that many locals recommended, the Proyecto Ulpiana Bar. 
this incredibly charming bar has a lively outdoor seating area and an indoor area that is characterized by its proud decoration of the deep-rooted nationalist and independence movements in Jayuya and Puerto Rico. On the walls, you'll see books, paintings, and photographs of many notable historical figures of the movements and of Jayuya back in the day. Here, you'll be able to relax in their mezzanine while reading one of their many books and sipping on their flavorful cocktails surrounded by history. After leaving Ulpina, we roamed around the city center of Jayuya and not only encountered many beautiful murals painted on the side of buildings displaying the pride that Hajuyanos have for the municipality, but we were also excited and surprised to find plagues fixed on the side of buildings where historical events took place, such as this plague where Blanca Canales raised the Puerto Rican flag for the first time and proclaimed the Republic of Puerto Rico, as well as this other plague on this building that used to be a U.S. Postal Office that was burnt down during the Nationalist Revolt of 1950 as a form of protest against the presence and influence of the U.S. in Puerto Rico. If you want to read these plaques and visit these historical places yourself, I've placed their location in the description below. After an extremely long, tiring, yet exciting day in Jayuya, we went back to our room at Hacienda Victoria Lucia to take a shower, rest, and dress up for a romantic dinner date at their in-house restaurant, Restaurante Doña Benita. Restaurante Doña Benita is the perfect place to try traditional Puerto Rican dishes and appetizers such as queso frito or fried cheese with guava sauce and trifongo. After this delicious meal and chocolatey dessert, we decided to take a quick stroll around Hacienda Victoria Lucia's beautiful dim lit garden to relax and take in all the unforgettable memories we had created on this jam-packed day at the incredible municipality of Jayuya. As the sun started to rise, we began the last day of our trip to Jayuya by visiting the Hacienda Tres Picachos. Originally established in 1960, the Hacienda Tres Picachos is one of the oldest coffee brands still in production in Puerto Rico. As soon as you step foot inside their property, you get a sense of going back in time to a traditional coffee hacienda with its huge and impressive water mill, a traditional white horse carriage, and even a small museum that holds antiquities such as farming tools, traditional record players, old radios, and even artifacts belonging to the Tainos and other indigenous civilizations of Puerto Rico. The Café Hacienda Tres Picachos has a cozy and spacious indoor dining area, but we opted to sit outside on their chilly wooden deck to have a cup of their flavorful locally grown coffee and some delicious breakfast accompanied by a breathtaking view of the surrounding mountains and their coffee plantation. After finishing our breakfast, we headed outside to visit their gorgeous hanging bridge, which offers a spectacular view of the river that crosses through their property and that provides vital nutrients to their crops. If you visit the Hacienda Tres Picachos during Christmas time or even during Valentine's Day, you might be lucky to find it completely decorated with lights and other ornaments, making this a perfect spot to take photos and videos to share with friends. After this, we continued exploring the immediate grounds of their hacienda, where we saw sacks of freshly picked coffee beans that seemed ready for processing, humorous guinea fowls roaming around their property, as well as some absolutely gorgeous peacocks with spectacular bright and shimmering feathers and even an extremely rare white feather albino peacock. 
And finally, before heading out to our next destination, we made sure to pass by their small shop and souvenir area where they sell coffee mugs and coffee bags of various sizes ranging from two ounces all the way up to a whopping five pound bag that is perfect for coffee lovers like me. Just keep in mind that you might have to place large coffee bags inside checked bags if you're traveling back home by plane. After a short drive from the Hacienda Tres Picachos, we arrived at the Museo de Nuestros Martires, a museum with the purpose of celebrating and remembering those who have fought for the liberty and rights of the Puerto Rican people throughout time. This beautiful museum nestled in the colossal mountains of Hayuya is actually the home of Kobi Davila, a proud Hayuyano who lived through and had family members who participated in the Nationalist Revolt of 1950. Kobi was kind enough to give us a walkthrough of the museum to show us the collection of numerous photographs, posters, illustrations, and other historical items from different moments in history when Puerto Rican people fought for their rights and freedom. Here, we learned about the Puerto Rican independence movement against the Spanish rule that eventually led to the Grito de Lares uprising in 1868, the horrific moment where Puerto Ricans lost their lives during the Masacre de Ponce and the Masacre de Rio Piedras, we saw photographs of important historical figures such as Pedro Albizu Campos, Blanca Canales, and other Puerto Rican revolutionaries. And we even saw posters of the protest in the island municipality of Vieques against its occupation and bombardment by the U.S. Navy. A story that I covered in my Ultimate Vieques Travel Guide, which you can see by clicking the description below or the card above. Without a doubt, the Museo de Nuestros Martires is a mandatory stop for those wanting to learn more about the history of Puerto Rico, especially parts of our history that have been deliberately disregarded and ignored, but that have had an immense impact on our current political, cultural, and social economic situation. After this impressive history lesson at the Museo de Nuestros Martires, we hopped back into our car and drove to another place that was recommended to us several times called Naturola La Barra. Naturola La Barra is a charming bar secluded deep in the mountains of Jayuya, making it the perfect place to disconnect, come closer to nature, and momentarily enjoy living a simpler life. At Naturola La Barra, you can enjoy eating authentic Puerto Rican flight fritters such as bacaraitos and alcapurrias, which are cooked in their rustic kitchen area and fogón placed near the creek that runs next to their property. Here, we decided to eat some delicious barriguitas de vieja, chicken and beef empanadillas, drink their fruity mojitos, and taste their juicy sliders with sweet potato fries and mayo ketchup. After enjoying the silence and looking out towards the luscious green landscape surrounding Naturola La Barra, we decided to pay a visit to the Bosque de los Pinos in Hayuya. This pine tree forest, located just a short walk or drive away from Naturola La Barra, is the perfect place to immerse yourself in nature, enjoy the presence of the colossal pine trees, and listen to the sound of the forest birds chirping and the soothing rustle of the leaves. This serene and tranquil forest creates the perfect environment to relax and reflect on the great memories you've created during your trip to this wonderful municipality. But before heading out of Hayuya, we needed to make one last stop at the themed bar called La Bodega de las Brujas. Based on the exterior of this bar, it might seem like just another ordinary chinchorro in the mountains of Puerto Rico. But as soon as you step foot inside, you're transported to the magical world of witches and wizards that will leave you spellbound. 
La Bodega Las Brujas is completely adorned with eclectic decor such as brooms, owls, and candles seemingly levitating in the room, creating an environment similar to what you will see in a Harry Potter movie. Here you will not only get to try their spellbinding elixirs and potions concocted by their experienced mixologist, but also shop at their bewitching gift shop where they sell all kinds of mystic items such as crystals, candles, incense, clothing with witchy graphics like the crescent moons and black cats and other curiosities. So if you love magic and are drawn to the mysteries of the occult and the power of witchcraft, you most definitely need to visit La Bodega Las Brujas and let yourself be enchanted by this magic themed bar in Hayuya. As our time in Hayuya came to an end, we couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder towards this amazing municipality. Hayuya is the type of place where every corner, street, river, mountain, and person holds an incredible story from our past as a nation. This is a place where you might unknowingly pass by an unassuming building without realizing the profound importance it had at some moment in time. A place with pristine natural landscapes that were sacred to our indigenous Taino ancestors whose traditions, history, and culture live on to this day thanks to the determination and dedication of the people of Hayuya. A place that played a monumentally important role in our history in shaping the Puerto Rico we live in today and a place that surpassed our expectations and captivated our hearts. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Instagram at Bricks Travel Guides for some behind the scenes of my videos. Also, if you'd like to support my work, you can make a small one-time or monthly donation on Buy Me A Coffee by clicking the link in the description below. Lastly, if you like this video, there's a good chance you might also like these two videos on my channel. So make sure to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching and see ya in the next one.